Every year, thousands of EMBAs and MBAs ask these two questions. How do I make the transition from one industry to another? Or how do I change from one function to another? And for some of you, you actually want to do both. And why not? Because it's there for the asking. It's just a simple case of how do you get your message across? What I want to do with you today is to show you a framework which I call the bridging model, which is to, to be able to put across your message quite succinctly. My name is Heather White and I run a business called Smarter Networking. And I'm also the founder of a program called Border and Ready. My job, the things that I do in life is I'm a matchmaker, which means I do a lot of connections. I work with people to understand what they want and actually then try and put them into the right place. I teach people how to network, develop their personal brand and LinkedIn. I've been using this model for ages and ages and ages and it works really well. But also what I do is I teach people this because I want to make sure you get what you want. Now, the bridging model was designed because of your frustration. And I wanted to find a way of making this really easy um, and to come up with a, an approach where you can go, yeah, I can do that. Now, I don't want you to confuse this with though, doing a 60 second pitch. The pitch to me is quite an aggressive sort of thing where you're gonna push something out. This instead is actually all about educating people and helping them to see you in the right way. The pitch for me is um, pushing. This is all about conversation and education. So let me show you how this works. But just before I do, I think it's really important to understand your audience. Can you imagine if you're a recruiter, you are being attacked by thousands of people all wanting to change their careers. And it's like, you know, attack. So when you're pushing too hard at somebody, it can be quite overwhelming. And what I want you to do is be memorable for the right reasons. So if you sort of think about your audience, these recruiters have got like a checklist in their minds, haven't they? Who they're looking to recruit, the, the fit and everything else like that. So what's really important is the first thing that you say, because what you say is what most people, the first thing you say, is what most people will then recall, okay? What you say has to be in line with what they're looking for. So they will have like a checklist in their heads as to what they want. And then of course, once you, the first thing you say, in most people's minds, it opens up this box. And in that box, you've got, yeah, okay, I'm looking for, yes, 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 no, I don't want that. So therefore, positioning yourself in the right way is really important, which you know. A couple of other things I think that are important as well. So the physical contact that you made, good handshakes, people are still really important. Okay, the emotional impact, passion, energy, I wanna feel all of that. Even for those of you who are more quieter, passion can still come across, okay? And then it's all about the fit. Now this could be both visually, how your vocals come across, but I want them to see you in the context of, yeah, I can see you working in that culture, that would be really cool. So let me talk to you about how the model actually works. So as I said, it's called the bridging model, and it's a way of convincing recruiters to see you in a certain opportunity. OK, and it's about how you organize your message, which I'm now going to take you through. So there are three steps to this model. The first one is always start with where you're heading. OK, and it must be in alignment with what they are focused on. Sounds really obvious, but most people always start with stage two, which is where you're coming from. Never start there. So start with where you're going. Second stage is where you're coming from. Okay, what did you, what were you doing? What are you doing at the moment? But it has to be in alignment with where you want to go. And then the third stage is your skill sets that are again aligned to where you're heading. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to work out, okay, this is where I'm going. This is where I'm from that has a relationship to where I'm going. And then the third part is these are the skill sets that actually align to where I'm heading as well. And then that completes quite a nice picture for people. Let me show you how it works. Let's break it down a little bit further. So in this case, bear, bear in mind, I want you to focus on what the recruiters are looking for. So you need to do your research, obviously. The way that you can start the conversation. So when they turn around and say to you, so you've done your MBA and what you think about doing next. This is when you can sort of say, right, I'm seeking to work with one of the top international management consultancy firms. Now, if you've done your research, you'll know that this recruiter, that's what they're looking for. They want to recruit for the top four. So therefore, you're going straight into bush, into their heads going, that's what I want. 
second step is actually where are you coming from? So in this case, what we can sort of say is that your expertise is in an international financial modeling within the pharma sector, and I've worked alongside the professionals from the top four. So again, you're relating back to the, the MCs, um, the management consultancy staff, and because it keeps it all in alignment with what the recruiter is actually looking for, meaning that they that they would sort of go, OK, fine, we need people who've got financial modelling. The pharmaceutical industry could be quite useful because, as you know, most of the top firms go right across all the different industries and sectors. So then they could see you doing something like that. The third part actually is your skill sets, what you did. And these must be, again, aligned to where you're heading. So in this case, you could say, right, OK, so um, my skills include financial modelling, including asset pricing, corporate finance, restructuring and M&A. Really clear, really concise, very simple. But in their minds, they could then also look at this and go, OK, well, the experience is useful. They're heading in the right direction. And um, what they do is in alignment with what we want. Everything else can be taught. OK. But also it's about your passion and your energy. Are you putting that across going, I'm really committed to this? So let me then just go through this one more time. You start with where you're heading. I'm seeking to work with one of the top international management consultancy firms. This is where I'm going. This is what I did. My expertise is in international financial modeling within the pharma sector. I've worked alongside professionals from the big four. These are my skills that are aligned to where I'm heading. Financial modelling, including asset pricing, corporate finance, restructuring, M&A. So you see what I mean by a framework, a very simple one, two, three. So let's build it up one more time. The recruiter turns around and says to you, so what do you want to do now that you've done your MBA or doing your MBA? You can then read through again this example. However, do you remember I sort of said this is all about education and conversation. So they kick it off or you kick it off. Okay, you say your thing and then you go into... I'd like to learn more about. So you bring the conversation back to them to draw them out to help you to then think about what you're going to say next. Now, what I'm always looking for whenever I'm doing um, my introductions is I'm also looking for the for some signals that says, is this working? So for me, the nonverbals here are really, really important. So are they showing interest? Are they glazing over? You know, they're glazing over. We're in trouble. OK, are they sort of going, oh, that's really interesting. So I'm looking for some non-verbals to give me an indication as to whether or not the explanation I've just given, is it landing? And of course, if it isn't landing, then we've got to then build on that again. Now, to make this model work, and as I've sort of said, it's a very simple model, you need to practice, 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 and also do your research, because that's the only way this stuff really does work. Because with everybody, it's got to be right for that particular person under those circumstances. But you keep following that one, two, three, and I'm sure you're going to find it works really well. Now, is it perfect? No, it's not. But let me give you a couple more examples that will help you to see how you can develop your own. The first one here is, um, these are all real, by the way. Uh, the first one here is where one chap was going to go from one industry to another. OK, so as you can see, what I've done is the way that I've worked his example we start by saying he wants to get into the technology sector. So he's moving from construction to technology. He's going to stay in the same function. So in this case, he's a financial uh, professional. OK, and what we've done is I've introduced that he's introduced the Internet and construction. So he's bringing the two things together. And he's because he's staying with the same function, we're building on his financial expertise. OK, so we've got financial planning, KPIs well versed in Excel, preparing for financial performance. And what I've done as well is I've sort of included that he's reporting into management. So therefore, we can see that he has the potential for growth. And also the way that he analyzes stuff. So again, it's actually making him more than just financial modeling. He's developed his skill sets quite roundedly. So, you know, this one, again, you can easily copy something like this. No problems at all. The second example is this lovely lady who um, moved from both a different um, function as well as into a different industry. So quite tricky. So what I was looking for here, she wants to move into data. She wants to become a data analyst and she wants to specialize in a certain sector. So we've got tech and consumer goods. At that point, she was an operations manager. Now, if you look at what an operations manager does, 
versus what an analyst does. There are some very close relationships stuff there. So when I looked at what she was doing and her skill sets, is I put in here examples on uh, things that she does or did that has a direct relationship to being a data analyst. So optimizing stock levels and improving cash flow, uh, determining monthly sales projections, uh, scheduling production and planning supply chain. So you can sort of see the relationship as an operations manager and how that would move and transition itself into being a data analyst. So two really good examples, and they're real examples as well. So let's finish on. If this is going to work for you, you've got to practice. Who are you going to practice on? Everybody. And I do that too, all the time. Now, first thing I would sort of say is practice on your fellow students. And the reason for saying that is because that is your future network. This is an awesome group that you're working with. And these guys are going to hear about things and remember you for what you want to do. So it's all about practice, 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 but also talk to the alumni, the speakers, recruiters, you know, keep testing. Even if you don't want to go into a certain industry um, and you feel that, you know, if you could test it on somebody who is recruiting for an industry, why not? You know, just keep on practicing. So I hope you find the bridging model useful. And if you need to get in contact with me, ask me any other questions. Here's my details below. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Bye.